The cosmological constant is presumably an enigmatic form of matter or energy that acts in opposition to gravity and is considered by many physicists to be equivalent to dark energy. Nobody really knows what the cosmological constant is exactly, but it is required in cosmological equations to reconcile our theory with observations of the universe. Dark matter is the term for the hypothesized matter in the universe required to explain the missing mass problem of the standard cosmological Big Bang model. Dark matter supposedly interacts with normal matter by gravity, but does not absorb or emit radiation which makes it invisible to see. Big Bang cosmologists propose that about 25% of the universe is made up of dark matter, possibly consisting of non-standard particles such as neutrinos or weakly interacting massive particles. 70% of the universe in their models is made up of the even more obscure dark energy, leaving only 5% of the universe as ordinary matter. In the 19th century, dark matter was blamed for the anomalous advance of Mercury's perihelion. Mercury's elliptical orbit around the Sun advances or precesses by a very small amount each orbit. The expected precession according to Newtonian and Comparian laws of planetary motion was inexplicably exceeded by 43 seconds of arc per century. If our solar system was comprised of only the Sun and one planet, that planet would retrace its elliptical path perfectly forever, assuming Newton's law of gravity was all there was. The presence of other planets wreck this because of the small gravitational forces they exert on each other. However, those effects are completely predictable. The anomalous effect on Mercury's orbit was not predictable by any known theories of gravitation at the time of its discovery. One possible explanation is that there might have been an undetected planet even closer to the Sun than Mercury itself. The hypothetical planet was named Vulcan after the Roman god of fire since it was thought to lie very close to the Sun. But obviously, no such planet was ever found between the Sun and Mercury. In 1915, Albert Einstein solved the problem with the publication of his general theory of relativity. It showed that the anomalous precession is a consequence of the way gravity distorts space and time, and helps to control the motions of the planets when they get particularly close to massive bodies, where the curvature of space is most pronounced. Newtonian gravitation is not an accurate enough description of planetary motion when space curvature departs from Euclidean flatness. General relativity explains the observed behavior almost exactly. So neither dark matter nor the planet Vulcan was needed to explain the anomalous advance of Mercury's perihelion. From his general theory of relativity, Einstein constructed a cosmological explanation of the universe based on a four-dimensional space-time metric. Within this model, he noticed that the universe would tend to collapse under gravitation, so he added a constant represented by the Greek symbol lambda to his field equations to maintain a static universe. Its value was extremely small, but on the scale of the universe, it had the effect of pushing entire galaxies apart. This model, of course, was developed after Einstein heard of the observations of Edwin Humble that indicated the galaxies in the universe were moving away from each other, meaning the universe was expanding. This is what Einstein calls the biggest blunder of his life. In recent years, cosmologists have reinvoked the cosmological constant, primarily because astronomers looking at high redshift supernova claim the universe is accelerating. This acceleration is only observed at high redshifts. A redshift is the displacement of spectral lines toward longer wavelengths, the red end of the spectrum, and radiation from distant galaxies and celestial objects. This is also interpreted as a Doppler shift which is proportional to velocity of recession and to distance. Or in other words, the wavelength of the light is stretched so the light is seen as shifted towards the red part of the spectrum. Something similar happens to sound waves when a source of sound moves relative to an observer. Examples of strong redshifting are a gamma ray perceived as an x-ray or initially visible light perceived as radio waves. Subtler redshifts are seen in the spectroscopic observations of astronomical objects, and are used in terrestrial technologies such as Doppler radar and handheld radars. And once again, thanks for watching.